Hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5 on Wednesday. <laughs> I'm Lena Gersa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I am all about the just released brand new fabulous Irresistible irresistible Blooms, try saying that 10 times fast, uh, suite from the new online exclusive release. Now, you may be thinking, what the heck is she doing going live on Wednesday? Uh, last week I warned you that that was going to happen because I was supposed to be taking my band to Music Fest yesterday. Well, the weather had other plans and forced the board to cancel buses, so we didn't get to go to Music Fest, which is quite heartbreaking for all of us. Uh, students worked so hard to prepare a really challenging repertoire for them, given at the level that they are, considering many of them just started playing within the last year. And uh, it was really disappointing for me too, because I was excited for my kids to see what Music Fest is all about and experience um, all that goes along with it. So really disappointed, can't be rescheduled. It is what it is. We're going to move on. <laughs> anyway, that's why I'm live today instead of yesterday. And it actually worked out quite well because I can, I'm featuring products that you can now actually go and order. If I had done my live yesterday, you would have had to wait till today to be able to get your hands on these products. But because I'm a day late, um, you get to place your order for these awesome products right away. So let me pull up my video here on my iPad and see who's joining me. And then we'll get to it here. Hi, Julie. Oh, you're live. You're catching me live. Hi, Louise. Yeah, we were disappointed too. Linda, Laura, thank you for joining me. Um, yeah, it, it, well, there's no putting a positive spin on it. It just really sucks. <laughs> That's the bottom line. But, um, like I said to the kids, there's nothing we can do about it. It's not our fault. It's not anything we did wrong. It's just, crappy luck. So there we go. Anyway, we are moving on and we are all about the beautiful Irresistible Blooms products and a couple of other online exclusives that I'm going to share with you as well today. Uh, we also got some really exciting um, news confirmed today. Um, Stampin' Up! is having a color refresh with the new annual catalog. So we've kind of been suspecting it because there are some new old colors in the Irresistible Blooms designer paper um, and Stampin' Up! confirmed today that there is a color refresh coming that affects all four color families. Plus, there's a new set of five in colors. So lots of exciting new colors coming our way with the new annual catalog. Now, what does that mean for you? Well, nothing right now, really, because we don't know which colors are retiring. However, my suggestion is if you have favorites um, that you are your go-to colors, meaning the ones you always reach for, I would suggest stocking up on the reinker and maybe a couple packs of cardstock just in case. If it ends up that they're not going away, no big deal. You just got lots of that color and it's your go-to anyway. So no biggie, right? But I would hate for you to miss out because once the, the refresh is announced, these colors, once it, it'll be while, while supplies last on um, those products, right? So I don't want you to miss out. And I'll tell you right now, the things that are going to go first are the ink pads, reinkers, um, coordinating stamp and blends, and the cardstock. So you'll want to make sure you kind of do a little mental inventory of the colors that you absolutely cannot run out of and uh, maybe stock up on those between now and the end of the month, okay? All right, that's my public service announcement for today. Let's do some stamping. I'm going to stop talking. Um, so I am going to flip my camera and we're going to get to it. So here we go. All right. There we go. Yeah, Louise, we know that two at minimum are going away, but I am betting because it's it's a it's a full refresh, it's affecting all four color families. I am thinking there's probably gonna be a significant number. Uh the last time we had a full color refresh, it was it was a, a I think it was like ten or twelve colors that we we lost. So um we all have to wait. <laughs> It's very exciting. Uh, it's hard to wait. It's kind of like Christmas, but uh, I'm excited to see to see what's coming. All right, so here we go. Irresistible Blooms is a fantastic suite of products, um, and I, I brought in these embossing folders because these are a must-have as far as I'm concerned. But let me talk about these new products first. I'm going to talk about the embossing folders, and then we're going to get some stamping, okay? So the Irresistible Blooms suite has um, a bundle, some DSP, and some embellishments in it. Um, we have a fabulous stamp set with beautiful floral images that are quite bold in terms of their, their line art, uh, which makes them fantastic 
plastic for heat embossing and using heat embossing techniques, which you're going to see in a little bit. Um, they're also super easy to color. These fonts are so fun. I love this sort of fun, funky, um, sort of curly font. I just love that. And I love that they paired it with a really simple um, uh, block font as well. So that is the Irresistible Bloom stamp set. And then, of course, we have coordinating dies. So we've got open dies that coordinate with the stamped images. And then we have some awesome sort of detailed dies. Um, you're going to see this one in action on one of the cards we're going to do today. Actually, you're going to see both of them. We're going to use this on the first one. So um, some fantastic um, new dies and, of course, some detailed leaves as well. So that is the bundle. And then we have the beautiful designer series paper. Now, many of the images in the DSP can be cut with the dies. That is something Stampin' Up! is really good for. So there's some leaves. Okay, so all of the leaves on here. Where's the uh, two set of leaves? There we go. That one coordinates. And then even these little itty bitty little sprigs there, they coordinate as well. So lots of uh, cross coordination between the dies and the DSP. Um, so we've got here are our new shades. We've got Lost Lagoon and Pretty Peacock. So the Lost Lagoon is sort of this bluey green. It was a former in color from back when Blackberry Bliss was an in color. So it's, it's from a while ago. Um, and then Pretty Peacock retired just a couple of years ago. And it was one that I absolutely loved. So I'm so excited to see that coming back. So we have this gorgeous DSP with textural designs. We've got sort of a color wash look. Um, in sort of cool tones and then of course on the back we have beautiful soft spatters and color washes just beautiful this looks like a, a sky to me so that's the the cool tones and then we've got the warm shades these blooms coordinate with the dyes as well okay so we can cut those out there's that little sprig again um, so we've got four well two different um, patterns that cut out flowers uh, we have this gorgeous sort of background. This I absolutely love. You're going to see that today as, as well as this one. Just beautiful, beautiful DSP. And then, of course, when we flip them over, once again, we get those washes at this time in the, in the warmer to tones. Okay, so just beautiful paper. Um, it is six by six. You get 48 sheets in the pack. Okay, so that is the DSP. And then we have these adorable loose frosted dots. Now, we're going to see these in action today. I'm actually going to use them on... Am I going to use them? Actually, I didn't use them on any of the cards that I'm going to make today. I have lots of samples where I've used them, um, but I, I just realized I didn't use them on any of the cards we're going to make today. Uh, but they are fabulous. That Your best friend when you're using these is your take your pick tool because you use the blue goo end to pick them up. I'll just show you that real quick. So you just pick them up with your blue goo end, put a dab of liquid glue, and drop your um, embellishment. So really easy to use and so, so pretty. So those are the loose frosted dots. And then this is not part, these are not part of the suite, but they are part of the online exclusive offering. And that is this new set of three uh, 3D embossing folders. So you get all three of them. Um, they're called basics. I just gave them numbers. Stampin' Up! didn't number them. I just did for my own sanity. Um, so we have, uh, well, I'm going to show you what they look like embossed because it's easier to see it on paper than to see it on the folder. So basics one, this one here is sort of a, looks like a star pattern or almost it would work really well for Christmas for as a poinsettia. Um, so that's this one. Then we have this sort of cross hatch pattern, which has been my new go-to. It's just nice and subtle, um, just a little bit of texture. And then we have these fun polka dots, which when you flip them over, look like a golf ball. Does that not look like a the, the outside of a golf ball? I just thought that as soon as I saw it, I'm like, okay, golf. Um, so there you go. The basics embossing folders, definitely a must have. And if you are just starting out and sort of starting to build your collection of embossing folders, this is one that needs to go right at the top of your list because it's a great uh, trio. All right, let's do some stamping. Oh, Louise found, where are we here? Hi, Jean from Maryland. Welcome. I'm just looking to see what I missed in the comments here. Uh, all right. Louise says, Lost Lagoon was 2014 to 16. Yeah, I knew it was a while ago. That's almost 10 years ago. Hard to believe. And uh, Pretty Peacock, 2019-21. Yeah. 
All right, so let's uh, do some stamping. Actually, I shouldn't say that because this one actually I've already done all the stamping for us. So the only stamping on here is our uh, our sentiment. Um, so this one here I posted earlier. It's got so much shine and shimmer. I don't know how well that's going to show up on the camera, um, but we've got shimmer, textured shimmer paper in the background. We've got some gold shimmer paper, and then I've used some Wink of Stella on my flower. So lots of shimmer and shine on this one. Does not photograph well and certainly doesn't show up well on the video, but you'll have to take my word for it. So to put this one together, I have a four and one eighth by five and three eighths piece of that beautiful DSP. So this is in a sock seafoam. It's kind of a, a leaf pattern. I'm going to hold it up because I'm not sure how well it's very, very soft. So I'm not sure how well that'll show up on the camera. Um, and then we have, what is this? Uh, one and a half by five and three eighths inch piece of the textured shimmer paper from the mini catalog. So we're going to start by going ahead and gluing that across our DSP here. And this is going to go on, I don't know, about an inch up from the bottom. And again, I like to use my grid paper to make sure things are straight. And I just realized that this is cut too long. So we're going to give that a little bit of a trim. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to add our beautiful die cut. So this um, circle die, let me just bring back the dies here to show you what I'm talking about. This one here actually cuts a, a peek through window. Okay. So this started out as a three and a half inch square of the gold shimmer paper. And then I die cut it using this circle die. So this is what you get when you die cut it. Okay. Um, and you can certainly use it as a peek through. I'll show you some samples later where I've done that. But for this card, I wanted the look of a wreath. So it's really easy. I'm just going to quickly trim this. It's going to look really rough at first, but then we're going to go and clean up and round our little dots here. So we'll just cut that out. So really quick and easy to cut that out. And then I just kind of took my snips and just cleaned up the, the hard edges. I'm not really worried about the fact that these are not perfect circles. Um, they don't really need to be, in my opinion. I think it works just fine with them just sort of being, it's almost like they're little droplets of water or something on a, on a spider web or something. So I'm just going to clean this up and get rid of my hard edges. There we go. We'll get rid of all those little bits. And then that is going to get glued onto our DSP. Now I'm going to come in a little bit from the edge because I'm going to put my flower here and I don't want it to hang off the edge. Um, so to glue this, you could certainly use adhesive sheets with these. Um, but I found it's actually quite quick and easy to just apply a couple of little dabs of liquid glue to the larger um, circles on the back of this die cut and just pop it into place. One thing I found when I used adhesive sheets with this is that it's so delicate once you remove it from the backing uh, or from the, the, the square that you cut it from that it, it can tear quite easily when you're removing the backing. So you have to be super careful if you're going to use adhesive sheets with this, but um, the glue actually works quite well. You just have to give it a sec to set up. So I'm just going to cover it with my hands. Hi, Karen, you made it. Welcome. I know Wednesday's a weird day, right? Nobody, nobody has it in their routine to join me on Wednesdays. So I kind of was expecting a lower turnout today. Um, it's my fault for changing our schedule. Well, not my fault. It was actually Music Fest's fault, but <laughs> you know what I mean? All right. So we have now some pieces that are die cut from the DSP. So this piece is actually one of the flowers that's just straight cut from the DSP. So that, that pattern that had the different floral images, um, I just die cut it. Okay. So that's that. My leaves are actually stamped in um, soft seafoam ink on the back side of this. Okay. So I, the little scrap that I cut off of here, I actually used to stamp and die cut my leaves. So there's no waste. Um, I didn't waste any DSP. No DSP was wasted in the making of this card. Um, so we're going to go ahead and add our little leaves. Now, before we do that, we're actually going to tuck in a few of these little gold ones as well. Where'd my other one go? I should have three. Looks, oh, there it is. It's hiding under my sentiment. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of seal to the back of my flower here. And we're going to add, uh, let's tuck that in a little bit more, a little less leaf, more flower. And then we're going to add, actually this one's going to kind of come around here because our flower is going to go right about there. And then I'm going to add another 
set of leaves here. I don't even know if I need that third one, actually. I think I'm just going to stick with two. And then we're going to go ahead and tuck these little guys in. So I'm actually just going to peel this back and tuck this in just like that. There's one. And then I'm going to add a little bit more to the back here and tuck this, have this kind of peeking out there. And then we're going to add one down here. Do I want it? Yeah, I think I'm going to have it kind of peeking out there just like that. Okay. So then that is going to get popped up on the front of my panel here. So I'm just going to add a couple of dimensionals. Oh, maybe one more here. And we're going to stick this on just like that. Okay, really simple. And then we are going to glue this onto our card base. So my card base is just thick, basic white cardstock, five and a half by eight and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So we'll go ahead and fold that in half along our score line. Yeah, I thought you'd like that idea, Louise. No waste, waste not, want not, right? When you have paper that's this pretty, um, you don't wanna waste any of it. And it adds a nice little bit of sort of subtle shading and texture to your leaves because the shading is in the DSP. So really low effort card, this one. I wanted to show you how quick and easy it is to make cards with this one. Now, this part is not quick and easy. I'm going to fussy cut uh, my sentiment. I have stamped and heat embossed it in gold on another little scrap of DSP. Um, I love that there are so many sort of color wash patterns in this DSP. So it makes it really nice to stamp um, right on the DSP and use it for your sentiments. So it's really not hard to fussy cut these images. They're quite bold. Um, so it, they, the lines are, are dark enough and thick enough that they're easy to see to fussy cut. So when we're fussy cutting again, we want to try to move our paper more than our scissors. Um, that gives us a cleaner cut and gives us a little bit more precision. So we're just going to kind of come around here and snip that and then I'm going to clean it up here. Let's clean up around the top of my H. And there we go. Okay, quick and easy little fussy cut sentiment. So I'm going to add a couple of uh, mini dimensionals, but I'm actually going to take and snip them in half. So this is a trick I use all the time. So I just kind of cut in from the bottom of my sheet of dimensionals and I end up with some half minis. Okay, and then I just kind of take my take your pick, get rid of my backing there and I plunk them in place where I want to use them. So I'm not worrying about them getting stuck to my fingers. By using the take your pick, it just makes it really easy to place them where you want them without ending up with them stuck to your fingers. I find if I try to pick up these little half mini dimensionals, I just end up with them stuck <laughs> all over the place and uh, it just does not go well. So this is going to get popped up sort of over the wreath opposite my flower. Okay, we're going to add a little bit of Wink Estella to our flower. I'm just going to brush it all over for a little bit of subtle shimmer. I didn't originally have the Wink of Stella on. I felt like the flower kind of got lost with all the other shimmer on the card. So we're on shimmer overload here. And then we're going to tie a cute little bow. So this is our white crinkled seam binding. Um, super easy to work with. It's uh, quite narrow. I think it's, what is it? Quarter inch? I think it's quarter of an inch. And it works quite well and you can color it to any color. So every crafter should have some of this in their studio because um, it's really easy to adopt it for whatever project you want to use. If you want a more prominent bow, you can uh, do a double bow. Um, double bows are pretty easy with this stuff as well. So it gives you lots of possibilities. So we're going to trim our tails here. Oops, I didn't trim at an angle. There we go. And that one's now too long. There we go. All right, let's grab a glue dot. So we're going to press the knot of our bow into a glue dot. <laughs> I do know you well, Louise. I've known you a long time. We've been doing this gig for a while. All right, there we go. There's a little bow. And then I decided to add some of the iridescent pearls. So I kind of wanted to highlight the fact that um, this suite, as beautiful as the embellishments are, uh, works beautifully with all sorts of other embellishments. So you don't have to get the whole shebang. Um, you can pace yourself and pick and choose the items that you grab first 
I would recommend grabbing the dies first. If you can only get one thing, grab the dies. Um, that's my best advice because they are the items that are harder to replace when they sell out, right? The dies come from China. So there is a much longer lead time on um, the dies. So if we sell out of the dies, they're going to be sold out for a while. <laughs> okay. And they may or may not come back. They stamp up has not confirmed the end date. There is no official end date on these products. Um, so if there's something that you have to have, get it sooner than later. All right. So there we go. Cute little simple card uh, with lots of shimmer and shine. All right. So that is number one. We'll get that out of the way and bring in number two. I love this one just because I love the colors and I love the gold shimmer and oh, makes me happy this card. So this uses an embossed resist technique. So I mentioned um, off the top that the images, the floral images in this set um, are really well suited for the embossed resist technique. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you how to do that. I've done some ahead of time, but I'm going to show you how I did it for these particular flowers. So let's do that. Let me pull out my bits here. Here we go. So I have, I'm not sure how well it'll show up, but I have stamped and heat embossed in white, one large and one small flower, which is what I used here, okay? And I have my blending brushes and I'm using Petal Pink and Flirty Flamingo ink, okay? So I'm gonna show you two different ways to do it. You kind of get a similar result. Um, you'll see on this one, this one has slightly softer edges. Um, it's kind of a matter of preference. I just wanted to try it both ways. So I'm going to do the large flower first. You can see I just re-inked my petal pink. I actually had a little re-inker party last weekend. <laughs> I was going through all my ink pads and they're all so dry. I'm like, I've got to re-ink. So that's what I did. I spent about an hour re-inking pads. Um, so I'm taking my petal pink with my blending brush and I'm just going to start in the center of my large flower and I'm going to work out. Okay, so the reason that I'm starting in the center is because I want the center to be darker, right? So I'm always starting in the center. I start with a very light touch. I'm not pressing hard at all. Um, really light touch and just working my way out. Now these small blending brushes are perfect for inking images, right? Because you have a little bit less surface area and it's easier to control where the ink goes. So it's easier to keep the ink on my flower rather than on the outside of my image. Okay, so that's my petal pink. I'm going to keep this out because I'm going to need it for the other one in a second. Oh, Deb, you're here. You made it. I'm glad. <laughs> All right. So here we go. We're going to take some Flirty Flamingo. And now I'm going to start in the center. I'm going to get rid of a little bit of ink on my grid paper. I'm going to start in the center and work outwards. But I'm only going to kind of work on this inner flower. I'm not going to come all the way out to the edge. Okay. And that gives me that soft outer edge and a little bit darker in the center. And I just love the way these two colors blend. They, they just were made for each other, but you see that? Isn't that pretty? All right, now we're gonna try the second one the opposite way. So I'm gonna come in with my Flirty Flamingo and I'm going to ink that first. I'm gonna go all the way out to the edges. Look at the difference when I have just the Flirty Flamingo. It's so much more pinky, um, it's amazing what a difference it makes when you just have this color standing on its own. Nothing wrong with this color, it's just not quite what I'm going for. Okay, and then I'm gonna come in with my petal pink. And again, I'm going to work just sort of on the inner, that inner part of the flower. And you'll see that this suddenly, that, that petal pink tone pulls in closer to this shade. It's a little bit different look, uh, and I honestly, when I tried this at first, I didn't think the petal pink would be, would be really that visible. I didn't think it would make that big a difference, um, when I applied it over top of the darker color, but I, it really does. I was really amazed at how much of a difference it makes. Okay. So that's just a color, a couple of, um, tips for coloring these images really quickly, right? If you are not a fan of, um, coloring with markers or, or water coloring, this is a really quick and easy way to color your images. Okay, now through the magic of television, I have <laughs> some die cut flowers. Um, so we're just going to put this one together. We've kind of done all the work here already. So I have here a piece of basic white cardstock. Um, it's for a five and a quarter by four. So this is using that new, one of the new basics embossing folders. It's that really subtle uh, sort of crosshatch pattern. And then I have here a piece of that beautiful designer paper. Um, so this is two and a quarter by four. All right, so that is going, actually, we're not going to glue that on yet. We're going to add our 
beautiful gold shimmery die cut. So here is, this is with that detailed die here, this one here from the die set. Now this one I did use with um, adhesive sheets on the back. You certainly could glue it. The first time I, I made a card with this, I did glue it. Um, I just decided that I like the ease and speed of the adhesive sheets a little bit better. Uh, but you certainly can glue it with liquid glue. Now you do have to be really careful when you're peeling your backing off these, okay? Because as you can see, um, it's going to pull and it's really easy to tear, okay? So you've got to take your time and be gentle. I'm trying to rush because I'm on a video here and I really should be. Um, so I'm gonna slow it down just a bit to get this last piece off. But you see how it pulls if you're not really careful? All right, so there we go. We've got our backing off. So now, you see how it kind of spreads out? Um, so I want to kind of keep them nice and close, right? I want it to, to look like a, a series of, a strand of, uh, these remind me of a strand of mini lights. I think these would be beautiful at Christmas time, this die. So I'm just going to kind of lay this down where I want it to go. I'm lining up one edge with the edge of my, my cardstock. I would advise always cutting it a little bit longer than what you're going to end up needing. This is a little bit low. I'm going to put up a bit higher. So we'll pull this up a bit. So it's about an inch up from the bottom. So we're just going to line up the right end there with the edge of my cardstock. Now this one needs to come in a little bit. And then we're just gonna kind of rub our, our hand across and that's just gonna secure everything. Okay, now I feel like this one is a little bit crooked. So we're gonna just adjust that a bit. Okay, but isn't that pretty? Um, so then I'm gonna take and trim off my overhang here. The, the reason that I suggest having it a bit longer is so that you can adjust as needed. Um, if you're trying, if you cut it exactly the same length, it's gonna be a little bit more frustrating to get it to both ends to line up. So by having it a bit longer on one end, it's a little bit more forgiving and easier to get it lined up. Okay, so there is our beautiful background. Now we're gonna cover up a little bit, not all of it, but a little bit with that DSP. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue that down. I got a little bit stuck to me. That's the one downside of using adhesive sheets. All the bits stick to your fingers. All right, so we're gonna stick this on and it's gonna go about a half inch in from the right side. So again, I'm using my grid paper to keep that nice and straight and make sure it's all nice and square. Okay, and then that is going to get adhered to my card base. Now, you notice how I have this beautiful gold shimmery um, mat behind my white cardstock. Originally, I had designed the card without the gold mat, but look at the difference. I mean, seriously, how could you not add that gold mat, right? However, that's a lot of beautiful specialty paper to hide behind um, a card front. So this is my little hack here. So I've cut this to four and one eighth by five and three eighths. Okay. And then I took the, the stitch rectangle die that would fit and still give me a frame um, and cut out the center. So now all I am going to, I'm waste, I'm not wasting anything. I used actually that inside frame for other things. Um, and that way I'm not covering up a whole bunch of beautiful specialty paper. So our card base is exactly the same as the last card. Um, basic, thick basic white, five and a half by eight and a half. So I'm going to start by gluing my frame down first to my card base, and then we're going to add our mat or our layer. Okay. So I'm going to just use a little bit of liquid glue and just kind of run it all the way around my frame here. And we'll pop this onto our card front. And again, the nice thing about using the liquid glue is we have that little bit of wiggle time to make sure it's nice and straight and square. I need to slide this up so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and layer that over top and no one will ever know that there's nothing in there. <laughs> All right, so again, I'm gonna add a little liquid glue. You certainly could use seal if you wanted to. I just had the lid off my liquid glue already, so. We're gonna use this one. And again, I'm just gonna center that over top of my gold mat. And what a difference it makes. Seriously, what a difference it makes. Okay, all right, so there we go. Now, I have my die cut flowers, 
And I have also stamped heat embossed and die cut the thank you sentiment. So this is stamped in heat embossed in gold. And then I used um, a label die from the All That dies. This is one of my favorite label dies to use. Um, and it works just beautifully with uh, this particular sentiment. It just fits quite nicely. So we're going to add our flowers. Now, often I have my flowers tucked behind my sentiment, but I just love these flowers so much that I decided to have them on top because why not? It's my card. I can do what I want, right? All right. So we're going to go ahead and add our sticker two flowers together, and then we're going to add our um, sentiment. So I'm going to put just a little bit of adhesive along the edges. This is all going to get secured. I'm just kind of tacking them in place for now. Okay, that is going to get secured on the front, but first we're going to add some pretty gold die cut leaves. All right, so what did I do? We're going to add a couple over here. What I love about these leaves is that they're not all the same. So each one is a little bit different, which makes it more interesting when doing our floral arranging. And they're all a little bit different in size as well, which is great. So there we go, there are our pretty flowers. Now this is just gonna get popped up on the front of our card. So let's add a few dimensionals. And I've had people ask me why I always adhere, when I'm doing my little floral arranging, why I always adhere my, um, my leaves and flowers to my label. Um, it's not really, there's not really a reason. I just find it easier um, to get things positioned exactly the way I want them if I kind of work from the front back. Does that make sense? Um, working from the back, like sticking things on and then adding things on top, I find harder. I find it easier to arrange if I have sort of what I want in front on top and then kind of work backwards. So that's kind of the method to my madness. So we're going to go ahead and add our beautiful focal image here to the front of our card. And then we're gonna add some of my very favorite embellishments, which I think I have used every week since they came out. <laughs> some of my adhesive backed sequins. So, oh, come here, you little guy. Don't hop away from me. So we're gonna add a couple of these guys to our card, just to bling it up a little bit more, like it's not already blingy enough. But there we go. Okay, so pretty and really, really easy. This, like the heat embossing and, and inking takes very little time, so really quick. Okay, I added a little strip of Scrap DSP on the inside, and there you go, done and done. Okay, moving on, last card, a little bit of a fun fold, not a difficult fun fold. So uh, for those who are newer, um, this is a really easy one to put together. So this is just, it's, it's basically a gate fold, but instead of having two even gates, I made them uneven, just for a little bit of visual interest. So not fancy, not hard, um, just a slightly different uh, set of measurements to, to score, but it's basically just a gatefold. So let's pull out our pieces. I'll show you my um, card base. So again, five and a half by eight and a half, all the same dimensions that we've had on our previous two cards. But this time I scored at, what did I score at? Uh, two and a half. Nope. I lied. Two and three quarters and seven. Two and three quarters and seven. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to fold. Now, when you're folding, this is the part you kind of want to be careful at. So when you're folding, you want to make sure that your two pieces or your two sides meet in the middle, okay? So I kind of like to match them up, hold them down with my finger, and then burnish, okay? And that helps me make sure that my gatefold is going to close properly. Sometimes if we're not super careful when we're measuring and scoring, uh, we can end up with a gap here, we end up with some overlap. So I just like to take my time when I'm folding that to make sure that my pieces line up, okay? All right, now we're gonna decorate this. Here is another one of those beautiful basics embossing folders. This is the this one, okay, the one that has the sort of floral or star pattern. So this piece is cut to fit this small narrow um, side of my gatefold. So it is one and a half by five and a half. I'm going to add a little bit of seal to the back. I'm only using seal because this is a really deeply embossed image and I want to make sure it actually sticks. Uh, sometimes with liquid glue, it can kind of get stuck in the recesses and it doesn't quite necessarily adhere as well as I would like it to. So I'm just lining this up with the edges of my card base here. Now this is a little bit long. I'm not sure if that shows, but it is. Take my word for it. It's just a smidge. 
too long. So we'll just trim that off a bit. Okay, so there is the right side. The left side, we're going to decorate with some more of this DSP. So this is the, the one of the new returning colors, returning in colors. Um, it is pretty peacock and it is one of my all time faves. It's, it's beautiful on both sides. It's hard to decide which one to use. Uh, but we're going to go with the um, sort of foliage side. So again, this is cut to, to fit that whole panel. It is two and three quarters by five and a half. This time I'm going to use some liquid glue just so I can shimmy that into place. So we'll add a bit of glue. And we're going to pop that on. I agree, Laura. It's one of my favorite sheets too. I love this one. Um, and I actually saw someone use it as like an underwater scene. So like it's seaweed. Uh, and it works so perfectly for, for underwater. So now every time I look at it, I'm like, oh, it's seaweed. Because that looks like bubbles, right? It's perfect. All right. So there we go. That's our, our card base. Now, I should mention, I didn't bother cutting the pieces for the inside of this. Mainly because I ran out of this paper. <laughs> I have used a lot of this DSP and I didn't have any more to, to do for this one. I will add it after the fact, um, but we're not going to do the inside of the card today. Just saying. Okay. So we're going to set this aside for a minute and we're going to work on our uh, focal panel here. So this is a stitch rectangle. It is um, two and, what is it? Two and five eighths by three and seven eighths. Okay. Um, cut with the stitch, stitch rectangle dies. And I'm going to bring in my blender brush and I still have my pretty peacock ink pad from when it was an ink color. So don't run out and try to order this. You can't get this right now. Okay. It is not available. If you still have it in your stash, awesome. Um, you're lucky just like me. However, you will not be able to order this until the new catalog comes out. Okay. Or if you decide to sign up as a demonstrator, you'll be able to get it. I hope during pre-order. All right. So that's just a little caution there. So I'm going to open up my ink pad. And I'm going to take my blender brush and we're going to start in the lower right corner of our rectangle here. And we're just going to do a little bit of inking. So I'm just kind of coming on from that bottom corner. And again, I'm always going to come on in the same spot because I want that bottom right corner to be the darkest part. Okay. So by always starting there, that part, part is always getting the most ink. So we're going to kind of create a little bit of an ombre look here. Oopsie. I absolutely love these blending brushes. You probably guessed that. I use them a lot. Um, if you've watched any of my reels, I use them on almost every reel that I make because they're just so fantastic. Um, so I'm just going to add a little bit more here. Okay. I'm going to make it just a bit darker down in this corner. I just want this to be nice and dark because I want my flower to really pop against it. I think it may be time to re-ink my pretty peacock. I've done a lot of stamping with this one the last little bit. All right, there we go. And then we're going to do a bit of stamping on here as well. So I have um, the leaf stamps and the spatter stamp. Yes, there's a spatter stamp in this, this stamp set. Um, so we're going to add some leaves first. So I'm gonna ink this up and we will see just how it's not too bad still. So I'm going to add some leaves down here and I'm going to add a couple of leaves kind of up here. Okay. Keeping in mind, my flower is going to go right there. I actually have my flower already cut. We're going to ink it in a second, but it's going to go right there. Okay. And then I'm going to come in with my spatters. I'm going to ink stamp off and then add a few spatters just like that. Okay. Now we're going to set this aside and we're going to ink our flower. Now we're not going to do any um, color blending. We're just going to use the pretty peacock. Um, so again, I've stamped and heat embossed in white on white cardstock. Just like last time, we're going to start in the center of our flower and work our way outwards. Okay. And this goes really, really quickly, as you can see. I do find it easier um, to do the color, like the inking before I die cut. But again, in the interest of time today, I did my die cut of ahead of time. But I would recommend, so you have a larger piece to hold on to, it's a little bit easier to control um, your ink when you're doing that. I just noticed there must have been a hair on my stamp because there's like the outline of one of my hairs there. <laughs> Oh well. Um, now, when we are doing this technique, this embossed resist technique, you do want to give um, a little bit of a wipe. So I'm just going to grab a tissue. I forgot to get one. And 
and we're going to just wipe the this off and that's going to make that white embossing really pop okay it's going to take off any ink that has settled on the embossed pattern and just make that really pop okay there we go there's our flower so i'm going to bring back my little gold or my little pail here we're going to layer that now this one louise i did not i did not cut out my center and you know why there is a reason because when i open my card i'm going to see the back of that gold panel okay now i suppose i could have cut something out of the one side but i decided to leave it as a full rectangle so that i didn't run the risk of that being visible when my card was opened okay so this piece is cut to two and three quarters by four and a smidge <laughs> i think i used the same um size rectangle last week because i think we had a whole discussion about just how much a smidge is um so we're going to go ahead and layer our rectangle onto the gold okay and then we're going to add our flower but first we're going to add some more of those beautiful gold leaves so we're just going to add a little bit of seal and i'm going to go one and two and three and that's going to get popped on right there so we'll add a couple of dimensionals <laughs> thanks louise i'm glad i'm glad you can take it all right let's get rid of our backings here and we're going to pop this on just like that okay and then that is going to get glued to the front of our card here now we're, we're going to take care to only put glue on this so it adheres to this panel so our card will still open so i'm just going to kind of put a couple of strips of seal and we're going to center this on the front of our card we're going to center it ish it's not perfectly centered because our flower makes it a little bit um, off center but there we go okay and now we're going to work on our sentiment so i have here another little stitch rectangle cut with the same dies uh, if you don't have the stitch rectangles you need them i'm sorry they're just they're great i use them all the time and we're going to stamp our hooray it's your day and what i love about this sentiment is it works for like pretty much any like you could make this a mother's day card you could make it a birthday card you could make it a a wedding card a shower card um you name it right <laughs> any day that you are celebrating um hooray it's your day works right all right so we're gonna go ahead and stick that onto the front of our card with a couple of dimensionals so i just want to make sure i'm getting these on the right way so that's gonna go on and it's gonna hang off the edge just a little bit that's gonna counterbalance my flower that's hanging off the edge at the bottom there that's why that is the way it is okay and then we're going to tie a little bitty bow with our fabulous pool party ribbon um this works really really well with um pretty peacock it's got the same sort of undertones the bluey green so we're going to tie a very bitty bow so i like to start with a big and then work it down so pull your loops make them smaller i didn't want a huge bow on here because i didn't want it to overpower that beautiful flower so a cute little bow and we're going to trim our tails and add a glue dot and we're just going to add that right in the top corner just like that okay so simple so pretty and again a really simple fold but a little bit different a um, little bit of a variation on a gate fold um, doesn't use any extra cardstock by any means, uh, but just a really simple one. Now, if you have a problem, see how this one closes a little bit better. Um, what you do is you flip this over and you take your bone folder and you really burnish the folds on both sides. And that will help your card, your gate fold to lie flatter. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'll bring back the other cards from today. And then I'm going to show you a bunch more ideas. So don't go anywhere. I got lots to share with about with this set or this suite rather. Okay. So there are our cards for today. Now I had a really good play with this. <laughs> um, so I was experimenting with techniques. Okay. I mentioned that there's lots of um, embossing techniques that you can use with this set. Um, so this one, I heat embossed my image, um, my background in white. And then I use my watercolor pencil to fill in my flowers in the white. The flower is actually stamped in native navy ink on shimmer paper 
white shimmer paper and then I used a, a blender pen and pulled um, some of the navy ink from the stamped image because it's such a bold um, outline it's really easy to pull enough ink in to color your flower so there's that one Here's another one using the wreath, but this time I doubled up that, that's the, I cut two circles. Um, and I love, I use some of those frosted, there's the loose frosted dots on my wreath. Similar card to what we made earlier. Okay, here's one, um, just heat embossed in black this time um, on polished pink cardstock. And then I did a little bit of shading with Melon Mambo, but I, my favorite thing is this background. I love the, the gold frame with the black um, die cut really pops that one. This is one I posted on the weekend as a little sneak peeky teaser of what was coming this week. So again, more of the DSP, that beautiful embossing folder, beautiful image. This one I colored um, just using a, a, a blender brush. Okay. And then here we go. Some more. This one I'm going to shoot a reel for. So this is again, emboss resist. Okay. And then here's another one portrait orientation with the wreath. Okay, and then I was having so much fun I had to do a class. So um, I just opened registration today for um, my virtual and in-person class. So it's the same class. If you are local and would like to come and stamp in my studio with me, um, it, you're welcome to do so. If you are long distance, then the virtual is probably your best option unless you want to come pay a visit. Um, both classes are happening on Saturday, April 1st. No fooling. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of the projects all about the DSP on, on in this class. So beautiful DSP, there's one, there's two, here's three. I wanted to get away from the soft color scheme and go with something that really pops. So there's one, I love Pretty Peacock with Melon Mambo. Love that combo. And then a couple of fun folds. So this one pops out like this. There's a panel on the back to write your sentiments. And then finally, we have a book fold, but it's got a surprise pop out on the inside. So those are the, the cards for my upcoming class. So you can find all of the information. I will post my link tree um, after at the conclusion of the video. And uh, you can click that link and there are links to the registration right there. Okay. All right, everybody. <laughs> Have a great evening. Thank you for joining me on a special night. I'll be back to normal next week uh, for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. Bye for now.